Hi everyone and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. This video is a little different than usual, but I recently bought the new MacBook Pro with Touch Bar and I'd like to give you my opinion on it from an iOS developer's point of view and I'd also like to show you how to use the Touch Bar to streamline your development workflow. So let's have a look. So this is it, the new MacBook Pro with Touch Bar. This is the 15 inch model, which is not maxed out. It is actually the cheapest version of the 15 inch MacBook Pro that you can get. So I didn't go for the 2.9 gigahertz processor and I also did not choose the four gigabyte Radeon Pro 460 because for a machine that is primarily used for development, it's just not worth the extra 200 bucks. So is this MacBook the right computer for a developer? I definitely say yes for several reasons. First of all, let's have a look at compile times. This is a tvOS project. If I run this in the simulator, then you can see that the compile times are great. We just have to wait a few seconds and boom, we have our simulator running our tvOS application. So the attaching of the app to the simulator takes a few seconds just as on any other Mac. So performance for compiling is great and definitely better than on the 13 inch model with the i5 processor and definitely a lot better on than on the MacBook Air or, or the 12 inch MacBook. But it is also useful to have the 15 inch model when it comes to dealing with storyboards since 15 inch just fits more view controllers and especially when you work with tvOS apps it's really useful to have this extra screen space. But now that we are in interface builder and that we have a storyboard open we can also talk about touch bar and it's really great one of the greatest features um, with touch bar support for Xcode is working with interface builder. So if I want to, let's say, zoom in to this view controller here, I can just hit the fit to screen button or the fit to screen symbol on my touch bar, or I can also zoom in to a hundred percent. And this is really useful because if you don't have a touch bar, then you have to navigate with this plus minus symbols here, and there are no real short cuts for that. So this is definitely one of the greatest features of the touch bar together with Xcode, but also really great is just be because it's a little faster when we have a look at this view controller here and here we have a misplaced view. We have an extra button on the touch bar for that. So I just hit update frames and I can update all of the frames here and my label just moves to the correct position. But the cool thing is that you not only can use touch bar in Interface Builder, you can also use it in code with a different set of keys. I've tried to work with them for a while now and I really think that they could benefit my workflow. So I think that kind of depends on your preferences. But let me show you what you can do. For example, what's really cool is that we can really quickly add and remove comments for a specific line. Or what we can also do is edit all of these property names in the scope, in the current scope. So I can just hit that button here and then I could call that city LBL, for example. And then all of the city labels, let's hope we find one, there is one, are renamed. This is especially useful since there is no real refractor for Swift out there at the moment. So this is really useful. Or if I want to jump to a definition, let's say we want to jump to the definition of UI label, then I just press this button and we are here at the definition of UI label. So this is all very handy. We also have a back key and a forward key. I could also press command arrow left and command arrow right for that. But I personally kind of like the feeling of touching this touch surface, which feels really good. And the last thing about the touch bar that I'd like to mention, which is also true for any app that supports the touch bar, is if you hit view and customize touch bar, you will get an interesting window on your MacBook screen, which lets you customize the look of your touch bar and it lets you reposition the buttons just as you need it and it also lets you add or remove buttons that you might not need. 
So when it comes to the new MacBook Pro, you get a computer that is very capable. You get a lot of power that is more than enough to create apps. You get an amazing screen which makes long coding hours very endurable. I really find the touch bar to be a great replacement for the function keys and I use it together with Xcode, Sketch and Photoshop and I already kind of miss it if it's not there. And if you're a developer and you want a mobile and capable machine or if you want a power horse and you are annoyed by the 5K iMacs fan noise, you can definitely get the new MacBook Pro.